With two weeks left on the transfer window, Arsenal are still active and after the breaking news regarding Yuri and Timber, things are about to get interesting. So today we'll find out which defenders Arsenal could be signing. We'll also get a massive update on the midfield madness, discuss all of the details behind Arsenal's behind closed doors friendly and find out the game changing news for Arsenal and their title charge. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Bows14 and welcome back to your boys channel and I hope you guys are doing sensational. Things are happening at Arsenal, we've got a lot to discuss. So as per, smash a like on the video if you enjoy, subscribe to the channel if you are new and help your boy on his road to 200,000 subscribers. But starting off with the breaking Arsenal news. Arsenal have been active behind the scenes. A behind the closed doors friendly against Luton Town. As reports confirm, Arsenal be Luton Town 3 goals to know and a behind closed doors friendly. Leandro Trossard scored 2 goals. Or David Ryan started a net. Leandro Trossard is making a statement. He is trying to break into that first team and he's making it very much aware. So all of the first teamers, do not get comfortable because I am waiting. A debut for David Raya and goal and a clean sheet. Potentially an early sign that Mikel Arteta is willing to rotate. Sam Dean also confirms that Bukayo Saka was the other goal scorer, while Alexander Zinchenko and Reese Nelson both featured. The return of Zinchenko is very important, especially after the latest news. Arsenal fans' worst fears have been confirmed, as Arsenal say we can confirm that Yuri and Timber has sustained an injury to the anterior cruciate ligament in his right knee. Yuri will undergo surgery in the coming days. This, my friends, is heartbreaking news. Timber says that I'm going to share my injury is more serious than expected, especially after the warm welcome I received. I wanted to repay you on the pitch, which will not be possible for the forthcoming period. Thanks for making me feel at home and see you soon at the carpet. In a very short space of time, Timber proved to Arsenal fans what made him so special. Fantastic in his 1v1 duels. Elite technical security. How long is he going to be out for? According to James Bench, scans showed that Yuri and Timber suffered no significant damage to his meniscus. He should be out for around 7 months. There are many confused Arsenal fans. Why was Timber not taken off before half time, despite going down? According to Chris Davison, even after Yuri and Timber left the field in the second time, sources have told ESPN that he was walking pain free around 2 hours later. It was only following a series of scans in the subsequent days that the full extent of the injury became clear. There are obvious concerns though. How is Timber going to be after his injury? Is he still going to have the same level of pace and power? As Dr. Rajpal Bra says, there is no evidence that's the case for elite athletes. In fact, multiple papers have tested the demos for speed, change of direction, jumping, etc. before and after the ACL surgeries, showing no differences. Football has evolved and likewise the recoveries. Look at the example of Gabriel Martinelli. He was out for a lengthy period of time with a knee injury, but after returning there's been no sign of him slowing down just as fast as before. Here's what Mikel Arteta has been saying. We will have to assess now as we are always open to reacting if something happens. This is not only with injuries but the market as well. That is why we sign Raya. We need two top players per position. Arsenal do have a lot of left back options. Zinchenko to Kivio or Tomiyasu to Tierney. The return of Zinchenko is so vital. Back in full training alongside Reese Nelson. Having played against Luton in town he is going to be available for Arsenal's next game. I also would keep an eye though on Jakob Kivio. This is mainly down to defensive ability. Kivio excels 1v1, just like Yuri and Timber. This is where Mikel Arteta will have to find the right balance. In certain games, it might be Zinchenko, but in the big games against the best forwards, do not be surprised if he turns to Kivio. But what does this mean for the future of Kieran Tierney? According to Tammy Mockbell, the expectation despite Timber's injury is for Tierney to be sold provided the Gunners receive a suitable fee. Arsenal would look to replace Tierney if he were to leave, particularly given Timber's injury, with Man City's Raul Cancelo known as the targets. Go to the game against Nottingham Forest, look at the Arsenal bench, there was no sign of Kieran Tierney. As Fabrizio Romano says, Tierney is expected to leave Arsenal in the next weeks, with Real Sociedad interested. Things are about to change though, with Timber not available anymore. As team news and ticks confirms, ideally Arsenal still think it's best he finds a new home, but we are now less likely to entertain silly off as he's higher up the pecking order. Arsenal understand the value of Kieran Tierney, a player in the peak of his powers with international experience. That's where we have to look for serious money and the only place to get that is the Premier League. As the ex-West Ham employee confirms, West Ham could make a move for Kieran Tierney. Then you have the development in the future of Nuno Tavares. A Fabrizio Romano exclusive confirms, Nongan Forest submits a formal proposal to sign Arsenal left back Nuno Tavares on a permanent deal. Forest trying top signing as a new left back. As negotiations are still ongoing on the player side, the deal is on. This is exactly what Arsenal wanted to hear. The first example of Premier League interest in Nuno Tavares. As Charles Watt confirms, Arsenal are looking for around 15 million euros to sell Nuno Tavares. Keep an eye on West Ham though because if they were to enter the race, there may be a bidding war. And that's where Arsenal may make even more money. Then you had an Arsenal surprise. A Fabrizio Romano exclusive out of nowhere, confirming that Arsenal's Charlie Patino is going to Swansea on a loan move. Here we go. Understand it's a loan until June and then back to Arsenal, where his deal expires in 2025. Since then, the move has been confirmed. 
it seems like Charlie Patino has changed his mind. He may still see a future at Arsenal. His Swansea debut was very impressive. In just 29 minutes off the bench, he got one assist and made four key passes. This could be a fantastic move for Patino. That is because of Swansea's profile. Last year in the championship, they were averaging around 64% possession. This will take Patino to a different level. A left-footed player able to play as a six and a number eight. This is one to keep an eye on. But what is happening with the future following Balogun? As things stands, Monaco are the only team to make a confirmed offer. And they have made another move. After Florian Plattenberg confirmed, their current striker Kevin Volland has found an agreement with Union Berlin. Monaco are definitely going to sign a forward, especially after the massive injury to Brule Donald and Bolo, who has suffered a cruciate ligament rupture. As James Bench confirms, AS Monaco are expected to submit a new bid for Foreign Balogun. But here's where there's another surprise. As Team News and Ticks confirms, Tottenham Hotspur have made an inquiry for Foreign Balogun. However, Arsenal have quoted a fee significantly higher than what they've been quoting the other clubs for the player. After the departure of Harry Kane, Tottenham are on the market for a forward. They have the finances. The only way Arsenal will allow this to happen is if they get a crazy amount of money. Moving on to Arsenal's late transfer moves, the Arsenal goalkeeping department is getting very interesting. First, confirmed news from Mike McGough, Arsenal and Cardiff City have agreed a season-long loan for Alex Ronison. Out of contract next summer, but Arsenal have an option to extend that by one year, retain his value. A lone move to the Championship, a chance to impress. Linking up with former Arsenal midfielder Aaron Ramsey. Alongside Matt Turner, two confirmed goalkeeping departures. There had to be an incoming. Arsenal announced their newest arrival. David Raya, our new number 22. As Raya says, I can't wait to be out there training with the lads and getting that with the goalkeeping union. That's a tight group and we're going to get along and push each other. So that's going to be a healthy group in my opinion. Not many people understand the character of David Raya. This guy's journey has been spectacular. As he says, I have been in England for nearly 12 years now, from back when I was 16, and going on loan to Stockport in the Conference Premier in 2014. That was a learning curve to develop me as a person and a professional, so I will always be grateful I went there. Just like Rams, the Raya's journey to the top has been very difficult, but that makes you a stronger character. This guy is a fighter, he is going to elevate Ramsdale's game, and Arsenal are ultimately going to be the winners. They will end up with the best possible goalkeeper. There's a clear reason why David Raya has been signed. Raya excels in so many different departments, but his ball striking stands out straight away. Have a look at this video here. Look at how clean and precise it is. Accurate every single time. This is where Ramsdale is going to have to up his levels. You can't just force the ball long all the time. He needs to show even more composure because if he doesn't, David Raya is waiting and he will take his place. This deal is so fascinating. Despite early indication that it was going to be a £27 million deal, it's actually going to be an initial loan deal for £3 million with a £27 million buy option. Brentford have accepted this way as it helps Arsenal with financial fair play. They've even confirmed that David Raya has signed a two-year Brentford deal with a further one-year option before joining Arsenal on loan for the 2023-24 campaign. Arsenal have the option to make the transfer permanent next summer. An option that will become an obligation if he plays a certain amount of games. As Fabrizio Romano confirms, the David Raya deal will be permanent as soon as possible, with FFP being the reason for the initial loan. This allows Arsenal breathing room, space to make even more signings. As the team news and ticks confirms, as said before, a lot depends on the outgoings. Arsenal have a level of targets, call them level 1, level 2 and level 3. If we get all the outgoings we want for the right price, we will be targeting a level 1 example higher price player. Level 2 if we don't achieve the outs that we want. On top of that, Arsenal are always looking for market opportunities. There is an opportunity coming out of Man City. As Fabrizio Romano says on Arsenal at the beginning of the market, they looked at the possibility to bring in one more centre-back. A player they really appreciate is America Laporte. This is true, but from what I've heard, Man City didn't want to sell one more player to Arsenal. They prefer a different destination for Laporte. Man City are learning, especially after last year. Having seen the impact of Jesus and Zinchenko, it only makes sense why. Laporte is entering the final two years of his contract, having only made 12 league appearances last year. His ball-playing ability is undeniable. You go back to his last year of being a full starter, 2022. This guy was averaging an insane 83 passes per game at a 95% accuracy, as well as 4.3 long balls. You think about the importance of William Saliba, how crucial he is to the Arsenal build-up. The signing of a Laporte would give Arsenal another option of elite ball playing out of the back. Things are developing though behind the scenes. As David Hornstein confirms, Man City have accepted an offer from Al Nasser for Almer Laporte, with the player thought to be open to the possibility City are willing to sell, with Al Nasser pushing to get the deal done. This all falls down to the player. Fabrizio Romano says that Al Nasser have improved their salary bid to sign reports. No formal proposal yet, but verbal discussions advancing on personal terms. City are open to give the green light. It is all up to the player. There also might be an opportunity coming out of Chelsea. According to Sam Wallace of the Telegraph, Chelsea have put their youngster Lewis Hall up for sale and they are seeking around £30 million. That seems like an insane price tag for a player that's only 18 years of age. But Hall is a top talent. 
Last year he was Chelsea's Youth Player of the Year, making 8 starts in the Premier League and being very impressive. Take for example his game against Man United. Playing on the left hand side as a wing back, 8 out of 8 ground duels, 37 accurate passes, 3 key passes, 5 accurate long balls, 2 big chances created and 6 out of 6 dribbles. This guy excels in terms of ball carrying. Playing as a left back there could be a space. The departure of Kieran Tierney. Injury to Yuri and Timber, but Newcastle already making their moves behind the scenes. Arsenal will have to be quick. You then have a player out of the Bundesliga. According to Ed Ahrens, it remains to be seen whether Arsenal rekindled their interest in RB Leipzig defender Mohamed Simikin. Simikin could cost in excess of £35 million. Pounds. 23 years of age, out of contract in 2027, this guy is ultimate versatility. Last year in the Bundesliga, he was playing as a right back, also able to play centrally. But then you go to the year before, also showing the ability to play on the left hand side as well. Mikel Arteta loves versatile defenders and there's a very clear reason why. It would almost be a 3 and one signing. Improve the Arsenal depth across all of the back four. Talk to me down below in the comments and if Arsenal can sign only one defender, who do you think that player should be? The midfield market is also getting crazy. You take for example Moses Caicedo, a player that was set to go to Liverpool after they agreed a British transfer record fee of £110 million, only for Chelsea to get the here we go. Signing Caicedo for 115 million euros on a contract until June 2031. And things got even crazier. Romeo Lavia, another reported Arsenal target. Fabrizio Romano given the here we go as a deal has been agreed. A final fee short of 60 million pounds, adults included. Two Arsenal targets off the window, both at very high price tags. It makes the Declan Rice deal look a little bit better. But then it becomes a question of who else could Arsenal be signing. Is the market about to get even more expensive? But then you have Ajax's Mohamed Kudus. As reports in Netherlands confirm, the deadline that Ajax gave Mohamed Kudus to agree personal terms with Brighton has expired. This does not mean that he will stay at Ajax. However, it gives them more control over the situation. His price tag may now increase. There's a very clear reason why Kudus didn't go to Brighton. As reports in Holland claimed, the holdup on the Mohamed Kudus to Brighton deal is a release clause issue. Kudus wants one and Brighton don't. Kudus is clearly waiting for a bigger club to come through. In terms of Arsenal, according to Fabrizio Romano, I am told the last call between Kudus and Arsenal's side was at the end of July, a couple of weeks ago. Let's see if they will reactivate the option. Let's see if they want to bid. Personal opinion, Kudus will be perfect for Arsenal and Chelsea. The player has started the season on fire. An 8 point rating in his first game of the season. 1 goal scored, 7 dribbles completed, 23 accurate passes and 1 big chance created. There's obvious quality here that needs to be in the Premier League. And that's where you might have another team. A Fabrizio Romano exclusive reveals, West Ham have now opened initial talks to sign Mohamed Kudus, a priority target in case Lucas Paqueta leaves to join Man City. Positive talks on the player side, Kudus is open to the move, but they are still waiting to approach Ajax as a deal will depend on Paqueta. There could be a crazy market opportunity coming out of La Liga. According to reports, João Felix is contemplating to terminate his contract with Atletico Madrid. The only concern I have there is the fact the player has obviously made it clear he wants to play for Barcelona. Is that a player that Arsenal would want to sign? His wages would be very, very high. But staying in Barcelona, there might be another opportunity. As reports in Spain claim, do not rule out Arsenal making a move for Barcelona's Ansu Fati. 20 years of age, having scored 7 goals last year and got 3 assists. Ansu Fati is an interesting prospect. He was meant to be the Barca star boy, having broken through at the age of 16. But a knee injury changed the game slowly getting back to his best form. When you've got a player this young with this level of potential, you can't write him off. Out of contract in 2027, Fabrizio Romano confirms that Ansu Fati is one to watch. Moving on to the other Arsenal news today, and starting off with breaking news regarding a former Arsenal player. At 34 years of age, Steel Walker is retiring. For Arsenal, he made nearly 400 appearances, 108 goals and 80 assists. In my opinion, Theo Walker is one of the most underrated Arsenal players. But what was your best memory of him in an Arsenal kit? Arsenal have also announced their brand new third kit. This one is an absolute beauty. Here's the brand new boys of Rice, Timber and Havertz promoting it. Arsenal have a green kit and I think it's fire. Maybe even our best one so far this season. How much would you rate this kit out of 10? Then you have Martin Odegaard. Now here he was before the game that gets to Longham Forest, receiving his Arsenal's Men's Player of the Season award from his star performance in a 2022-23 season. Arsenal understand his value and they are making moves. As Charles Watt confirms, they've opened contract talks with Martin Odegaard and these guys are moving fast. Fabrizio Romano confirms that Arsenal want to advance in talks to get a new deal done for Martin Odegaard in the next weeks. Initial discussions are set to take place as extending Martin's contracts will be one of the priorities of the year. Odegaard is taking his game to a new level, game by game becoming more of a leader. Arsenal believe they have their version of Kevin De Bruyne. Talking of KDB, we have some game-changing news. Breaking news confirms that after a scan on Monday, Man City want Kevin De Bruyne to undergo a surgery on his hamstring injury to avoid a reoccurrence. Estimated to keep him out until early 2024. No final decision has been made yet. This will be a vital blow for Man City. Think about the departure of Ilkay Gundogan. 
They've already lost a very important goal scorer. Then you take out Kevin De Bruyne, who had 16 assists last year, 32 big chances created, and he was meant to be the brand new captain. Here's where Arsenal have to be ruthless, make the best possible start to the season, maximize what Man City aren't at their best. That is the video there and there though, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed. If you have, don't forget to smash a like and also subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you want to follow your boy on all of the social medias, then the links are down below in the description. But that was the latest episode of the Transfers FC. No Yuri and Simba means Arsenal may be making more signings. The market is about to get interesting, so stay tuned as always. And I'll see you next time. Take care in a bit.